it is most filmmakers dream to make a movie of their own but let's face it Filmmaking is a very expensive venture. A quick Google search reveals that you need an average of $65 million in order to be able to make a movie. Take this with a grain of salt. For most of us filmmakers, this amount of money remain figures that we read in books and they remain quite elusive. But in this video, I am going to be sharing with you tips as to how to make a movie with very little resources. I'm going to be gathering experiences from our recent movie that I made with my students from the University of Education Winneba, which is titled Shadows. The movie was actually shot in four days, and so what I'm going to be doing is that if you are here just to learn about filmmaking by listening to the tips, you can watch the part one of this video, which is strictly going to be about how you can also make your movie for very little amount of money. But if you are here for the fun of just watching and learning from behind scenes, skip to the part two of this video, which I've provided timestamps in the description below. You can forward ahead to watch just the behind scenes with my voiceover exclusively. Without of the way, let's get right into this video. All right, six, three, six, six. All right, reset, reset. The first part of movie production is actually called pre-production. The pre-production stage is where you do all your planning. It simply involves writing and any other thing that you do before you actually bring out the camera to go on location and shoot. So the first tip I have for you during the pre-production stage starts from the writing process. Actually write what you know or be inspired by your environment. So what we did in this particular instant was that right from the ideation process that is coming up with the idea for this film, we allowed ourselves to be inspired by the environment. These touch houses that you see are just a few kilometers away from where our university resides. So it was just nice that we incorporated it into our work because that location is available. And so we made sure that we write to our strengths and not our weaknesses. And also writing to what is available and not what will require us to spend so much money searching for the perfect location for our story. And trust me, if you begin to implement this, you are not going to write stories about space knowing very well that you cannot fly to space, but you are certainly going to cut your coat according to your size. Now, after having your script, the next step is to do a script breakdown. A script breakdown is a process where you extract every single thing that you wrote in each particular scene so that you may know exactly what to bring along or what you need to make a complete scene. The scene breakdown may contain all the costumes, all the actors, all the props, that is everything that the actors interact with. And by doing this, it is going to offer you an opportunity to understand exactly the things you need for the shoot. And those things that you can actually go ahead and make them home or the shortcuts that you can take but still be able to achieve the highest level of quality. And I am a proponent of being able to achieve a lot with just using less. Get the right costumes. I cannot stress the importance of this particular point, but trust me, if we pay attention to the costumes, the look of our films are certainly going to change. By paying attention to the costume, you may be able to select the right color combinations that kind of match the tone and what exactly you are going for. There is always a tendency of beginner filmmakers or most of us thinking that making the best film is about hiring a red or a black magic or the most expensive camera out there. But trust me, if you can cut all the shortcuts and put all the money into costumes and put very less budget into renting a camera, trust me, you are going to be able to shoot your movie, which is going to come out well, but whilst making sure that you are spending very minimal on the project. Do not cut corners with your casting. I cannot stress this enough, guys. Most beginner filmmakers, once again, we go out there, we write big ideas and we go out, spend all the money on renting the most expensive camera and all those other things. Meanwhile, acting is also another major point that is going to make or break our story. So here is the catch. If you can get very qualified actors or maybe get people who are really passionate about acting, trust me, spend all your money there than rather going in for the most expensive camera you are going to learn this lesson in a very hard way if you do not take this very serious. So I encourage that you do your casting very well so that the acting in your film would be top notch. In terms of equipment, DIY or do it yourself would be your best friend. Do not allow the fact that you do not have money to rent certain kind of equipment to limit you. For example, over here, as you can see, I'm holding the camera and we actually have a small box that I took. This is actually a mobile phone box 
and I cut a circle out of it and we inserted our camera inside. The main purpose of this was to cut down the amount of light that was kind of flooding the lens and to make sure that we have a very clean shot. In the professional world, you need something like this, which is called a matte box, which is supposed to help you cut all the lights that are supposed to flood on the camera lens. By so doing, your rig looks very cool. But at the end of the day, what exactly it stands for is what I seek to represent using that particular box. So my audience did not see this because I took that shortcut, but was still able to get a decent image just by using a box to cut off the light. After all, what the matte box is supposed to do is to cut off the light. And I've been able to achieve the same thing just by using a mobile phone box. Of course, by using the professional thing, uh, the ease of use comes in. And of course, the politics of production, the more it looks nicer and bigger, uh, it gives you extra points. But in this particular case, we are talking about being able to do this for very little budget. So if it makes sense to manufacture certain equipment or certain things yourself to be able to shoot, do not hesitate to do that because trust me, you are going to be cutting the right corners so that you don't need so much money to make this movie but still be able to come up with a quality product. Now, let's go to production. Production is simply the exciting part where we all want. Where we go, we shoot, we have all the fun. The first tip I'll be giving you in this particular stage is to make sure that you feed your actors, guys. This is a very important thing. In our particular case, we did not do it, so it kind of affected the level of commitment that we had on this particular set. So make sure that you are constantly feeding your actors because trust me, when you are making independent films like this, because mostly you are relying on friends and family and probably even actors that might charge you may be doing it for a fraction of what they are worth, it's very important that at least you make sure that they have enough to eat on your set. And by doing so, you're going to realize that energy levels are going to be very high and at the end of the day, they would want to show up again the next time you have another project. The other important point I have for you on set is to be very flexible. Now, what do I mean by be flexible? Do not get too married to your initial ideas so much that you are not open to change. It's very important that you listen to some suggestions coming from crew members and other people. And if you have to just swallow the humble pie because there are certain scenarios that the idea you have in your head might not be the most appropriate one or might not be the best one. And sometimes you even get to the location and the location begins to dictate to you. For example, in our particular case, it had to rain almost all the days that we shot this particular movie. And we didn't just want to stop. We did not by any means say that rain wasn't bad and so we should go back. Because remember, if you are doing an independent film production, you do not have that luxury to say that I'm canceling today's shoot after you get to set and coming back the next day. We certainly did not have that option. So we decided to make sure that not even nature could stop us from shooting. So be very flexible and make sure that you are always ready to adapt just to be able to save costs. The other part is to make sure that morale is very high on the set. If morale isn't high on set, you realize that all of a sudden people are going to get dull and when they get dull, you are not going to be able to meet your daily targets and when you don't meet your daily target, it means that you have to come on set another day and you are going to spend more money on food and it keeps going. So in this case, it's very important that you make sure that your actors are constantly energized. Energize here does not mean just giving them food, but make sure that you have times for them to interact and also time for sometimes just some little play. As you can see in our particular scenario, we had to allow the students to go about you know, playing and pay. This is actually a game in the country Ghana where we come from. And just sometimes give room for them to just have fun, laugh over issues. And trust me, the most effective form of learning is what I call edutainment, which means education and entertainment. And by that, learning becomes a very interesting thing and not just by sitting in the four corners of a classroom. My last point for production is to make sure that you do not tell your cast and crew that it is a wrap until you watch your edited footage. All right. It's officially... <laughs> Most times, some things may have been wrong, 
or there are certain things that may require you to go back and reshoot because you intend to cut down costs, you do not have the luxury of spending so much time in painting out things using the VFX. So to cut off the issue of let's fix it in post, which will be very costly and time consuming, you may be required to go back and shoot certain things that do not work out. So what I like to do is that I tell the actors that, well, it may be a wrap because we are ending, but after watching the footage on the editing bench, we will communicate back to you if it is actually a full wrap or not. And I think that if you intend to cut down cost in making your movie, this is something that you must really take serious. Now, the last point I'll give you in production is to give clear cut instructions. I cannot stress this, guys. If you read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, he says that if the orders are confusing, then it is certainly the fault of the general. So you must take time because on a film set or in a production, you, the leaders, are just kind of like army generals. So if there's anything we can learn from Sun Tzu's Art of War, then the thing we should be taking away is to make sure that we are giving clear-cut instructions on set. And this is important because in filmmaking, some of the terms may be duplicated and used in different particular scenarios. For example, just one single component that makes up a video is called a frame. The screen where you are watching me right now is called a frame. And in between it, you can have a frame within a frame. So if you're using the word frame on set, be very sure that your actors and the crew and everybody understand the particular frame you are referring to. And this particular analogy applies to every single thing that might be confusing or that might have two meanings. Make sure you're constantly giving clear-cut instructions to post-production. Post-production is simply the stage where we bring everything that we've shot together and now piece it together using the editing process and also sending it out for distribution so that people in their houses can watch, people on YouTube and people in the theaters can also go and watch their film. And so at this particular stage, the first tip I'll be giving you is to make sure that you watch all your footage. Trust me guys, an editor is like a DJ. The best DJs are those who prepare ahead of time. You can't go to war without knowing exactly the tools that you have available in your arsenal. So it is very important that you take your time, go through all your footage and know exactly the kind of coverage that you have so that that will aid you to be able to edit. Let me interrupt this video to bring you a word from the sponsor of this video, which is you watching me right now. Yes, I know you are surprised, but you are the sponsor of this video. Thank you for always sponsoring us with a like button. So if you haven't done so, please just click on the like button because that is one of the best ways you can sponsor this channel because it goes a long way in helping other people discover this channel right here on YouTube. Without out of the way, let's get back to the video. Sound design would elevate the quality of your film. In this particular example, even though I was making the movie with my students at the University of Education, Winneba, I also used some of my students from the University of Ghana. We went out to try to mimic some of the actions that we recorded on set. And with this particular scenario, we couldn't have gotten the mic very close to the action because, of course, the mic would actually be in shot. So we decided later on to go back and act or kind of reenact what the actors were doing in the original piece so that we will be able to record it at a very close range and put the sound onto the actual film. And when you watch the actual film, you see that you can hear every single thing. Now, just listen to this. So you kind of get the point. And this ties in very nicely to my last point, which is find the right music that kind of elevates or elicit the right emotions from your audience. Music is very important to how your audience would consume or how they will feel watching your scene. So be very mindful, take your time, go through to get music. It's very expensive finding copyright free or royalty free music for your film. Now, what I like to do is that I use a lot of the YouTube audio library to find most of my free music. Now, I know most of you do complain that you do not find high quality music on YouTube. But trust me, here is a very similar analogy. When you go to the mall to buy goods, trust me, because they know that a chunk of you are very lazy in going down, they put the most expensive things at the top because they know that all of you are going to be looking at eye level. So you are going to end up buying those expensive things and the company in turn would make more money. However, you may find a similar product from another company which is cheaper 
which is below the shelves. And just by psychology, they know that most of you are not going to go down to search for those. And so if we transfer that same knowledge into searching for music on YouTube Audio Library, trust me, most of the quality sounds are usually hidden beneath the list. So do not just start with the first two or three and you are fed up or just the first page and you are fed up. No, take your time, go through. And one thing I do suggest is that do not wait until you have a project before you search for free music. Most of the times, because I need copyright free music, I go up there, search for all sorts of music that gives me different vibes. I store them and wait for projects that might really need me to use those particular things. And that takes me to the very first point again where I said that. Let what you have inspire the kind of stories you write. And so sometimes by the kind of sound effects and kind of music tracks I have available, even those whilst writing gives me idea as to what to write because I know that if I write this, I have the right location to shoot it and I have the right kind of music to kind of elicit the kind of emotion that I want to get from my audience. Thank you so much for watching part one of this video. We are going to continue with part two where I'm going to be sharing with you the full behind the scene and during the process i am going to be telling you some of the things that we did and what you are actually witnessing on screen catch you in the part two of this video you guys are welcome to the part two of this particular video as you can see this is one of the locations where we shot the movie and it is a very epic location. This location is just a few miles away from where our university is located and we decided to incorporate it into our movie production. As you can see, it's really a very epic location and it's really very amazing. That is one secret, guys, that cinematographers don't tell you. To shoot a great movie, you have to leverage on the available resources and not just available resources, very nice looking locations. Now, in this particular example, I went out to just go and greet the people and just as courtesy demands to let them know that we will be coming around that area to shoot. And on this particular day as well, I went out with my very good friend, Mr. Malam Sanusi, and we went to scout this amazing locations, guys. Trust me, with project like this, if you can leverage the environment that you have, then you are going to be making very epic stuff. It is just really amazing to be out here at this particular locations. Right after that, I sat down with all the assistant directors and we did something called a script breakdown. At this particular point in time, we extracted exactly all the things we needed to make the movie a success from all the props and actors, costumes, and even locations. This is a very integral part of filmmaking because this better prepares you because you know exactly what you want to do and all the available resources. So that was what this meeting was all about. And we also had our supervisor, Dr. Edu Johnson with us. And the following day, we also did an audition. As you can see, this lady right here is called Grace and she was also one of the assistant directors and together we were interviewing this particular ladies to find out if they were willing to go the extra mile to participate in this project. So the next day I went out with Clinton and my good friend again Malam. We went to the community, we spoke to the people once again just to let them know that um, we're coming there on a good purpose and as you can see just look at the ground you can tell that it had rained on that particular day when we went there to do this particular location scout and oh boy that should have told me that we were in for a bumpy ride because the following days after as you are going to learn as this behind scene video progresses you will get to realize that it rained almost throughout the whole days that we were there so what you see right here also is the preparation of the fake blood dr johnson came with some of his students who are studying special effects and we did put together some amazing stuff. And over here is uh, a lady called Doris Animal, and she really helped us to make some very good props. As you can see, this is the prop they are designing that is supposed to be like a water bottle that one of the characters or the main characters carries on his voyage throughout the whole movie. The main day came and we set out to the field and when you look above 
is clearly about to rain because the whole place is cloudy. And once again, you can see some of the actors helping carry some of the stuff that we needed on location. And this is what I spoke about in the part one of this video, where you need to cast people who are genuinely very much interested in the project. Because if you don't have money to hire different people to do all these things, then you will need actors or people who do or who play multi roles on your set. So upon arrival, it began to already drizzle and this should have given us a head start that we were in for a bumpy ride. But hey, despite that, we were optimistic that the day was really going to go well. And this was the first shot that we took for the day. I used my phone, that is what we used to shoot these behind scene videos, just to do a demonstration. So when you watch the actual film, what you are seeing right now is exactly uh, that kind of motion that I use for the film itself. So this was just me trying to use my phone camera to rehearse the whole movie. This is important because I didn't want to use my actual camera in rehearsals so that we may end up chopping through lots of batteries even before the production itself starts. Just out of nowhere, it began to rain seriously. And at this point, everybody thought we were going to give up, but no, we didn't. However, we were so hungry, and as you can see, that is my good friend Malam Sanusi. Guys, he was the hero of this particular production. He rode in the rain, went to get us some food and water, and brought them back to us. Everybody certainly needs a Malam Sanusi in their life. This guy is just a hero by all standards. So that was how Malam held this production. And during that process, he joined Dr. Johnson and they decided to work on the special effects during this period so that once the rain subsides, we can get back to shooting ways immediately. So as you can see over here, that is them preparing the guy. And that is the finished effect you are seeing. They are actually ushering the guy in to exactly where we are going to shoot. This guy is amazing, guys. He really shaved his head just because of this role. He calls himself Van Damme. Really amazing guy, guys. He also has a YouTube channel, and I might reach out to him to share some of his stuff in the description below. You can check out some of the things that he does on his channel, and I can tell you that this guy is really amazing. So as you can see, this was just Dr. Johnson trying to put in some finishing touches to this particular head slice. And before we ended the day, the actors were excited. And as you can see, at this point in time, we were all walking home very excited. And that was the end of day one. So day two came and because it had rained the previous day, which was day one, we had to cross some water because some of the roads had become so unmotorable. So some of the students had to help carry other students across uh, little water bodies like this. And trust me guys, it was really amazing. This was where most of them demonstrated true spirit of togetherness and just that sheer determination. And as you can see, this guy right here is attempting to carry this particular generator, which is really so heavy guys. And this is the sort of commitment I'm always talking about. So really amazing guy, he decides to carry it. And once again, he also became one of the heroes of this particular production. We got to the location and we had to set up, as you can see, the makeup crew and even we, the camera people, were setting up. And at the same time, some of the scenes we're coming to shoot here contain some special effects. And also we needed the actors because it's a continuous running scene. They have to run into shot. I had to make sure that I instructed the actors to kind of run around just to make sure that they actually have real sweat on their body instead of using water or sprinkling some sort of uh, fake sweat that we didn't have. So this man right here is called Paul Adams and as you can see, he is starting the running process and all his other colleagues are certainly going to join him because he wasn't the only one who was required to kind of like run through the whole process. And while the process was going on, uh, Miss Doris Enemil, who was also one of the assistant directors, was helping Mr. Paul also rehearse his lines. Whilst the other lady here, she's called Lizzie, she was actually trying to run to make sure that she was also ready and fully in the mood for the production. This is another hero of this production. She's called Charlotte. She was pregnant throughout the whole process, but this lady showed up almost every day on set and worked so hard to make sure that this project saw the light of day. So guys, as you can see, I can confidently say that I was pretty much very lucky to find some very determined and selfless people who really worked to make sure that this movie became a success. So if you are working on things like this, please make sure to find very enthusiastic people who will be willing to go the extra mile. And as you can see, the magic of Dr. Edu Johnson, guys, 
the finger has been sliced and that is the effect you are seeing right over here. Over here, just look at what this guy is going to do. He just lies down. Meanwhile, the ground is very wet because of the fact that it had rained the previous day. And even this guy had to fall on the ground. And trust me, guys, this level of dedication is just so unreal. And that is the sort of dedication you need from actors when you are working with projects like this, where you have to move very fast and when you have very little resources to share. And once again, Dr. Edu is actually doing his magic with this arrow, which is supposed to be stuck on the guy's head. And right after that, we went ahead to shoot this particular scene where we had the lady leaving behind a small girl and a little boy. And as you can see, the little girl was crying, even though it was part of the story, uh, but her crying just made everything a little bit much more easier because that's what we actually really wanted at the end of the day. And this is how some of the final shots look like from the movie and it is really epic. At this point, the video is getting so long, so I'm going to end this. And if this video is able to get more than 1K likes, I'm going to come back again and give you a follow-up by three, containing the day three and four and also we added another miscellaneous day which was another day when we went out to shoot some extra addendums and some extra things that we needed to add up to make the story complete so make sure to click on the like button if you want to see an extended version which will contain the day three four and day five of this particular production thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy this video i'll do much appreciate it if you do click on the subscribe button please make sure to do turn on the post notification bell so you are notified anytime i drop awesome content like this right here from the continent of africa i appreciate you because i do understand that this has been a very long video thank you so much for sticking here and if you want to learn filmmaking photography and all its related branches we have all those kind of content on this channel we also watch movies and talk about other movie industries all across the globe if this sounds interesting please click on the subscribe button to join the channel click here to watch the next filmmaking video and i would definitely catch you in the next one. until next time as always guys keep practicing filmmaking so I traveled all the way to this part of uh, the city states of Tamale to make sure that I give you people very awesome content. So hey, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be bringing you more awesome content very soon. It's a right.